is Mike Kavanaugh with Hero News. I'm here with the incredibly handsome Bruce Robert Harris. How are you? I'm great. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> it is so good to have you here. Not only are you a friend, but you're a, real, a true hero to me with all that you do. So thank you so much for being our October Broadway Hero of the Month. I'm so proud to be October's uh, Hero of the Month. It's, it's a great honor, and I really do appreciate it. I love the work that I do in the community. I do. Let's go right into that now. You're doing Gay Fest again this year, and the annual gala is coming up October 22nd. Tell us about it. Uh, the gala is going to be in a beautiful restaurant. I prefer to call it a benefit for the Harvey Milk High School, which is our charity at Gay Fest NYC. And uh, it's going to be at Robert Restaurant at 2 Columbus Circle, and it's in a beautiful location overlooking the entire park. It's just an absolutely beautiful room, stunning, and I think it's the perfect locale for us. We're honoring Thomas Crever, who's the executive director at the Hedrick Martin Institute, and we're very proud to do that. And there's a lot of people that love the work that he's done in the community, and we felt this year he should be nominated and uh, awarded uh, this community service award. We give a Gay Fest community service award every year, and as you remember, at the last benefit, it was David Mixner. That so. was incredible, actually. Meeting him was such an honor. Please get your tickets right away. We have that listed on our site. If you look under events, you'll find everything you need to know about this event. And where can we buy tickets? You can buy tickets at theatermania.com and easily also you can go to gayfestnyc.com and there's an automatic link that takes you into Ovation Tix at Theatermania and you can buy a gala ticket. Tell us about Gay Fest. I think a lot of people would like to know more about it. Well, Gay Fest NYC supports, it's really a playwrights festival. It's the opportunity for us to have submissions. We get submissions from as far as the Netherlands, all over the world. We get plays, uh, musicals and plays, and we self-produce them in a festival that'll be at the Abington this year in May into June and on West 36th Street. And Gay Fest was a playwrights festival with a beneficiary of being the Harvey Milk High School. We always felt that we should support the community and support the future of the gay community with these kids. And we do three things with them. We do education, mentoring, and scholarships. So we had started uh, our first year doing a playwriting class. And what we very fastly came to realize that these kids were getting their stories out. These kids are battered, abused. Some of them are gay. Some of them are transgender. And they had no safe haven to go to school. So they, this was a transfer. This is a transfer high school. So they transfer in. They're able to get their education. They're able to get to school. They're able to get their GED, graduate, and hopefully go to college. And what we do is we pay teachers to go in to a playwriting class every week. It's expensive, so help us support this. But we basically raise money for the mentoring. We do the education. We bring in positive role models, obviously, from the world that they don't have an everyday chance to meet. And at the end of the year, with any funds that we've either raised or any ticket prices or any donations that come in, goes to scholarships. And we help send these kids to school so they get a, a real fresh start in their first year at school. But I just want to say that this is an amazing cause, and you should not you should run and get your ticket right now. Go on the on the internet right now and buy your ticket. And if you want to make a donation to Gay Fest, how can they do that? Same thing. Go to the website gayfestnyc.com and hit the support button. But I'd like to mention if there's any budding playwrights out there and you've got a play that you've written and you want to submit it, there's also a submissions button. So that's how we find new work. It's not only from the United States; it's from around the world. And some really wonderful things get submitted. Okay, so now getting back to you, you won a Tony. I did win a Tony. I'm very proud. Uh, this year was a great year for me. Um, we had uh, also been producers on Bonnie and Clyde, which I think Frank Wildhorn's script was uh, the score was wonderful. We also did nice work if you can get it, and we won a Tony for Clybourne Park for best play. That's terrific. Adam Perry's a nice work if you can get it. Amazing show. Yes, yes, and I saw that you interviewed him here, too, as one of the heroes, which I'm so happy to be in that same category. Probably hero. Hi, Adam. So anyway, <laughs> so you won the Tony, and I saw the, all these pictures, and you, you met just about everybody. Who was the one person you went, oh, my God, I met this person? You know, I had an encounter with Tony Bennett. I say it was an encounter because I saw him and I said hello. And then he very, you know, uh, coyly said to me, and who are you and what are you doing here? And I said, well, I'm one of the producers of the show. And he went, oh, stopped in his tracks and he talked to me. It was amazing. And everyone stopped and take pictures of us. And he was just so gentle and kind. And really, it, it was quite a thrill to meet him. Okay, so you've met so many celebrities on the red carpet. I just want to know how many bow ties you have. Many bow ties? Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> You know what? I've always found that uh, the bow tie gets attention. I don't know why, because it's a, a it's a 
uh, a gentleman thing. Um, I think I have about 10 bow ties. <laughs> so I'll, we'll have to get him more because he's going to a lot of red carpets. <laughs> so if you could meet anyone now that you've met all these people, who's the one person that you would be dying to meet that you haven't? You know, I, I'm sorry as a gay man, I have to say I would love to sit down and have dinner with Cher or Bette Midler. Okay, so what I'm dying to know is where are you from and how did you get to New York? <laughs> wow, my past. No one ever asks me about that. Um, I'm very happy to say that I'm from Long Island. I'm a New Yorker. And then I got a scholarship to go to Juilliard. Wow, that doesn't, <laughs> that's pretty impressive. How did you get a scholarship to Juilliard? That's amazing. You must have been a fantastic dancer. You know, Juilliard is a, a, ver a very special place without question. It wasn't an academic scholarship. It was more an artistic scholarship. Juilliard is a conservatory, and it lives off of the graduates doing well, doing theater, doing film, doing television. I'd, I have to honestly say, I think I did a great audition. They saw some potential in me. They saw this personality, um, sometimes quite large. And I had a wonderful four years there. I was able to travel to China. I was able to travel around the world. I danced for Paul Taylor. I danced for Lar Lubavitch. I really got to meet some amazing people. And it's funny, the four years that I was there, Martha Graham, Agnes DeMille, Jose Limon, they all taught at the school. They were all my teachers. And Hanya Holm was my mentor until she died. So I, I really had a wonderful opportunity of some education. And I interestingly enough, when I was at the school, I used to be um, spar sparring partners. I used to do a fencing class with Kevin Klein. So we were really involved with them. And I didn't know who he was at the time, you know. So, um, it, you know, it, you, you had the nice opportunity of being in a conservatory atmosphere and learning an awful lot. Do, and I really think it prepared me to step outside of Juilliard. And I was living in the area as well. So it was a wonderful thing. I went to Juilliard. I became a, um, a professional ballet dancer for um, about six, seven years. And um, Robert Joffrey picked me for Joffrey II at one point, And it was just a wonderful experience. And then I met George Balanchine. And I performed uh, with the company as a kind of an extra, as you would say. And he kind of liked me. And I went up at SPAC, um, where they had done their season. So I was a dancer and really very much on a ruse. Somebody um, made me a bet and told me, uh, made a bet with me to audition for a show. And I auditioned for a show and I got hooked on show business. And I just started to sing and dance and I, I've loved it. My training really helped me do that. And I did that for 26 years. And I did film and television too. So tell me, how did you transcend from being a performer into producing? You know, it's interesting. Um, I was on a, a tour of My Fair Lady, and on that tour, I'd come off the stage after the wedding, and it was just something about doing it that day that just didn't feel right. And the two stars of the show who were friends of mine said, what's wrong? And I said, I don't know. I, I could just do this better. And they said, what do you mean do this better? I said, I don't know. The costumes could be better. Our housing could be better. The venues could be better. And one of the women that was the star of the so show said, so get off stage and be a producer. And I thought, a producer? What does a producer do? And then I sort of did some research, read a few books, and I figured that was the right segue. I was getting old. I was, you know, so I, <laughs> you know, I'm very happy to be associated with nice work if you can get it because it's a dance show. And I'm also doing Pippin this spring. And again, such beautiful dancing, Fosse dancing. All right, Bruce, so what's quirky about you? Quirky. What's the definition of quirky? Oh, oh, okay. Um, I'm a major True Blood fan. I love vampires. I read all Anne Rice's books, and I definitely wanted to be the vampire. And it's funny. I would say five years ago, I really wanted a vampire to bite me because I definitely wanted to stay as young as I was at that time. But I do like the vampire stuff. I love all those action adventure movies, and I try to get my boyfriend, or I should say fiance, to uh, to go to those movies. He won't. I have other friends who will go with me, but I I do kind of enjoy the entertainment factor of those movies. So maybe that's the quirky part of me. Okay, let's try and get him to go to Twilight, the the final. Are you are you I into did, it? I did. I took him to the first one. He hated it. <laughs> Tell us a little secret. What is something that few people know about you? I was married to a woman. How about Wow, that? scandal, scandal. <laughs> Are you I, still friends with her? You know, I was just going to say she is one of my best friends, and I'm very happy to say that uh, she's also an investor in my show. 
done everything from being the actor, being the dancer, to being a producer. For, for young people that are just starting out, what do you think the secret of success is to get into the business and be successful for a long time? Oh, that's kind of really easy. Um, be genuine. Be good at what you do. Uh, don't take no for an answer. It's quite obvious whether there's talent there, whether it's singing, acting, or dancing, or even producing. Um, develop your skills and network. Um, I'll be honest and tell you that I think a lot of the things that I've done in my life that I've been successful in has been networking with people. When people come into audition, I disarm them. I talk to them, I say something to them. That first minute that they come in, that impression, if for any reason an actor is turned down for a job, it's not personal. I think actors have to realize that it's business. Some equity, some non-equity, some hair color, some height. Producers have imaginations, but sometimes there are real stringent obligations that they have to meet for shows when they're casting those shows. I was one of the uh, producers up at the White Plains Performing Arts Center with Jack Batman, and we saw hundreds and hundreds of actors. And I'd happil happily tell you that we would get notes from actors just thanking us for the, aud for the uh, opportunity and the audience to audition for us, because we always had something positive to say. There's no reason to say anything negative. There are many actors out there, all shapes, all sizes, all colors, it doesn't matter. There's always a part for someone, and pre being, you know, prevailing is very important. So I would say, with all the rejection that's out there, take the rejection in, use it, use it for the next time, and go to the next audition. I've always said this to actors: you have to cast a much wider net. You can't just think you're going to get that one job and that's going to make your life. It's not. You have to cast a wider net, and you have to have a little bit more open uh, openness about the way you audition. So tell me, through all these shows and all these experiences, what has been the funniest thing that's ever happened dur to you or t during a show or during a rehearsal? Oh, my goodness. Um, oh, this is so hard. Um, on my very first performance in Zurich, Switzerland, I was doing Mistopheles, and I was what was known as the matinee king. Uh, we had a very brilliant dancer named Lindsay Chambers who had blown out his ankles or his calf muscle and I'd had a chance to go on and I'd rehearsed the role so much and I loved this role so much as Mr. Mistopheles and I did all of these wonderful jumps and turns and it was so wonderful and at the very end of the whole thing I did a double tour and I landed on my butt completely with my back to the audience on a rake stage actually falling down. <laughs> I think that's beautiful because cats do do that, so it's fine. <laughs> well, it's, and I got right back up, and I don't know if they knew, but I certainly did, and all the kittens behind me, they were laughing. I would say that was probably the most embarrassing thing that happened to me on stage. The audience didn't know. They like, how did he do that? That was amazing. They spoke another language, so maybe they didn't notice, but I don't know. It was so fast, I got right back up. But I think every dancer has that story, definitely. So Bruce, as you know, we're a site for newly diagnosed and people living with HIV. Do you have any message about the importance of being safe, especially young people, and if you have the disease about going on and living your life to the fullest? You know, I have a real thought on that. When I first produced Elegies, it was done for the Momentum AIDS Project, and the goal was to raise enough money to feed the entire population at the Momentum AIDS Project for six months which I accomplished. And I was also able to buy them a van to deliver these meals to HIV positive uh, um, individuals. Um, you know, HIV today is not a death sentence. Um, many of my friends are HIV positive and I believe that they can live very healthy and wonderful lives. I unfortunately am also part of the generation where friends had gotten HIV and committed suicide, and uh, became exceedingly depressed, lost their careers, lost their homes, lost their finances. Again, I go right back to that support system. You know, a lot of these people that became HIV positive were embarrassed and ashamed. And I would say for the HIV community that's watching this, it's a really, it's your opportunity to open up and talk about who you are, what you love in life, I don't think HIV should define anyone. I know it doesn't with my friends and it doesn't with me with my friends. 
Um, and I sincerely hope that the kids at the Harvey Milk High School see the role models that we bring in and see that it's okay, it happens. What I don't like are some of the people who are just so against it and have no prevention uh, tactics to help these people. But support and network is really important. And I, I, I'd like to believe that kids are being a little bit more careful. And I think that, um, you know, we all want to have fun and we can all have fun safely. And I think that we should do that. So, Bruce, I want to thank you so much for being our Broadway hero for October, for Halloween, my favorite, favorite holiday of the year. Watch what I'm going to be wearing. <laughs> thank you so much for everything that you do. Please support Gay Fest. And I wish you more. Gayfest NYC. Gayfestnyc.com, not org. And I wish you so much success. And I can't wait to see when you win your next Tony. And I love the fact that you are doing all of this, Michael. I think it's amazing. I, I'm very proud to be here today. And I'm, I'm proud to be a Broadway hero. But more or less, this particular website is addressing what people need. And you've really reached out. And I really commend you for that. Hi, my name is Bruce Robert Harris. I'm very happy to be October's Broadway Hero of the Month. Please come and check out GayFestNYC.com, and we're doing our annual benefit on Monday, October 22nd, and happy Halloween.